Throughout time, the way I've worked out has changed drastically. When I first started working out when I was 15, the gym that I used to go to was in Bally's in Rosemead, and it was this place with all these like triple OG Asian buff dudes. So like, you see CT Fletcher on YouTube, right? My gym was full of CT Fletchers. Mexican CT Fletchers, Black CT Fletchers, Asian CT Fletchers, all these dudes in their 40s that were locked up, they come out, they're tatted the fuck up, they're fucking yoked, and they all had these penitentiary style workouts, and that was the school that I was trained in. So when I trained with those guys, and when they taught me when I was a little 15 year old, it was all about feasting and pushing yourself to the max, and you wanna barf, and you wanna rip your muscles apart, don't be a little bitch. That was the type of environment I was in. Like, pre-workout didn't exist back then, so what a lot of us did is we get Advil, we crush it and sprinkle it in black coffee and mix it up. So what the Advil does is it thins out your blood. Now what the coffee does, it makes it that much more absorbable. So that was our like backyard pre-workout before pre-workouts even existed. So that's kind of like the school that I came from, which is the penitentiary style and like beasting and training until your arms fall off. As I got more and more into powerlifting, what I realized is that's not the best way to train. When you look at the most elite athletes, the athletes that have achieved the highest level, they all have a very scientific approach. So contrary to Rocky 3 was it? Where it's like uh, Rocky versus Drago from Russia. Rocky was just American with all heart pushing himself. That's actually not the best way. The Soviets have been doing it right. They're the ones with careful calculated logs. They've been having an RPE, which is a, a rated perceived exertion. They know how to auto-regulate their training, know when to like dial down, know when to push it a little bit more. They don't just go in and fry their CNS all the time, which is why some of the best lifters all around Olympic and powerlifting and sports for a long time was the Soviets because they're very scientific about it because they understand the human body and it's not about being a bitch like oh my god look at that motherfucker with the calculator and a clipboard it's about understanding the human body and using it as a tool so because of that I I've changed the way I train on my main lifts I try to go balls out without frying myself as soon as I get close to frying myself because I know your CNS takes at least 48 hours to recover I don't want to ruin the workouts of the other days so I, I keep myself there and on all my accessories because I know it's there to accessorize and build your strength and your muscle, I don't fry myself the way I used to do. Like before even with circuits, I would push myself until I'm panting and panting and then now I learned that there's grip tests. If you wake up in the morning, you, you squeeze your grip and it, if it doesn't feel 100%, your CNS is pretty much fried. You should probably take the day off or go light. And there's deloading. Like I learned so many new things throughout my years of working out that Although you should always have that heart, that like beast, I'm gonna give it my all heart, you have to balance that with the knowledge of your body and training and, and then balance it too. Cause you can't be a bitch still, but the way that I train is has changed like so much throughout the years as I learned more. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Four! God, son of a... I have four more. <laughs> what I would tell my 15 year old Bart right now, my like little brother or something, and he just started lifting, I would tell him to read all the articles that he can, watch all the videos that he can, and train with proven data. Because as appealing as it is to just beast it, with no direction, just go in and sweat and throw iron around all day. If you want to progress quickly, that's not the best way. That's why there's all these, like it took me like four or five years to deadlift 500, right? But people that train smart from deadlifting 300, you could probably reach 500 in a year. So that's the difference. Like if you train without direction and you're just beasting all day, the gains that you make, it's, it's minimal. For six years, I had a plateau of bench and I was only able to put up 295 four times. Maybe five on a, on a good day. But within me training correctly and scientifically from October of 2013 until now, I can now put up 335 for four. So that's a 40 pound PR in a matter of like six months when before I was stuck for five, six years. So that's the difference is 
understanding how your body works and using that to your advantage rather than like the, the super bro science way that I used to train and I used to diet. You want me to sit here? No, he wanted to intercept you because you make him laugh. He can't finish his head. He's almost done. Because you're not there. <laughs> 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 I created this program back in January, combining all the elements of strength programs that I've read that I like. The small Off, Cube, Conjugate Method. The things that I benefited from all of them, I, I combined. 